friends, Kate the Button Lady here, here to tell you more about the history of buttons. Today I've got a great selection from my personal collection and I'm going to show you where they came from. So the first ones I would love to talk about, and get a close up on these, are perfume buttons. Now these buttons um, uh, arrived in the United States around the 1700s, 1800s, um, and they really... Um, started when perfume was first created. Um, ancient Egypt, perfumes were made with oils and very caustic materials, so they would stain clothing and as they evolved through more um, changes, they had to put the scents onto um, these buttons. In the Middle Ages, perfume was strictly for religious ceremonies, uh, for cl ritual cleansings and blessings, and um, they really weren't used for day-to-day -day wear or common folk until like much later in the mid-century. Um, in the 17 and 1800s, they started to trade became um, of perfume became a more standard practice. Um, but they were still very caustic and very um, uh, made of oils and things that would stain clothes. And for many women, they would only have one dress. So the perfume um, would be put on these buttons and they would be, um, the scent would uh, carry on the buttons and the little scraps of fabric in there and uh, they would um, keep, keep you smelling not like the streets or anything else where people would throw their garbage and, and poop. Um, so they became a more standard um, thing for a ladies of the house to wear and buy. So a lot of times the um, fabric used would be a velvet material. These are probably a little bit older. These are, um, you can tell they've been quite used. Uh, there's probably some old velvet. Um, the stuff in here, this one's probably a little closer to the beginning of perfume buttons and they would have used um, fabric uh, velvet inside of them as well. You can see the lovely little picture. Um, this one is a little bit later, probably 1800s, and this is actually like a woven cloth material. And this one, I'm unsure if it's actually legitimately a perfume button. It looks right, it feels about right, um, but there is no cloth left in it as well, just the metal um, backing is, as well. And so they developed these buttons to basically carry the fragrance without ruining the clothing. Uh, one of my favorite stories about perfume buttons is um, during the Civil War, ladies would um, give the, their man going off to war one of their perfume buttons to wear on a lapel or in their pocket um, to, to carry them with them for the war. Um, I have uh, one other perfume button, but sadly it is just a broken piece of button and uh, I wish I could find the rest of it, but this just came in a kind of a grab bag, so. But that is that for the perfume buttons. Okay, um, another one of my favorite buttons are the calico or china buttons, as they're also called. And the patterns were first created, they were printed on the cloth, and then they were laid on top of the glass, and then burned away the fabric and the ink would transfer onto the buttons. And this was pretty much the standard practice until the late 1800s. Uh, really popular in America around the 1840s uh, when uh, whole families would buy um, fabric to match everybody, mom, dad, kids, babies, everybody would have matching fabric and so the cloth manufacturers would have the buttons made to match the fabric. Um, it's like the little house on the prairie, every, you know, all those, all the matching fabrics, you know, where you still see the families all matching. That was that time. So this is my collection of uh, China buttons and they have a couple of different types. So these are um, called dish. Um, and then there's, or no, I'm sorry, these are the dish, these are the saucers, and these are the ink wells. And if you can see, they're kind of raised up just slightly um, on the sides. And you can see there's a lot of different patterns. Um, there have been over a hundred different patterns um, from one company, but we have, a, uh, we know that there are around 600 patterns of uh, China calico buttons 
ever made. Um, in, um, nearly all the buttons were white buttons with colored um, colored toppings. Um, there are a few black and darker bodied variations, but not as many as the white. White was basically the industry standard. Um, blue, blue, blue. What else do I got? What else do I got? So China buttons got their start in India in around the 17th century when they started to um, be traded to the to Europe and to the Americas. So it really um, became a phenomenon. It was one of the most popular buttons um, alongside the pearl and shells and very decorative. Um, but it was also an affordable option for many families. Um, there's stories of a father going to um, the market and trying to, he was supposed to buy grain and ended up buying um, buttons and matching fabric for the whole family. So it's just a lot of really cool history on um, the China buttons. Um, I'm working on collecting more. I really love them. Um, if you have some in your collection, I would love to see them. So please tag me on Instagram or Facebook. I would love to see your China buttons. Um, the last button, and probably my crown jewel, and I will tell you how I got this button. So in my beginning collection uh, phase, I started to just buy jars of buttons I would see at antique stores. And so I'd start sorting through and figuring out like where these came from and I saw like this giant like gold nugget looking thing and I was like that has got to be something. So I did a little research and I, re I had to figure out what it said on it because it was kind of hard to decipher um, but the marking on the back is quite clear. So this is my Connecticut National Guard. Um, coat button from around the Civil War. Um, it was It's made by the Waterbury Button Company. Um, also the Scoville um, Button Company made those same type of buttons. Um, this size button is, um, I recently found out, is actually um, an officer pin, an uh, officer button. Um, and it would have been on a coat. Um, and it was probably, most of these buttons per se were made um, around during the Civil War but not actually used in the war. Some have been found on the battlefield but most of the buttons um, were actually for veterans for people who had fought or you know survived and um, so it would have been an officer you know for a nice decorative coat after the war was over and it's just really cool it is um, just my absolute favorite button um, these were probably made around 1860 to 1865 um, and uh, it's just a really neat, um, neat part of my collection. It's so the Connecticut National Guard was basically the unit that replaced the state militia. They would help, um, you know, keep everything running in cities and towns. So they would go and um, help rebuild roads or make sure that you know the peace was kept within the city. Um, and yeah, so this was actually an officer button, um, probably on a coat. Show it to you one more time. So cool. So, do I, have it right? I have it upside down. There. That's that's not upside down. So yeah, Connecticut National Guard. Really cool. I'll show you the back of the button too, so you can see the marking here. Um, it says Waterbury on it. So that means it was made, or you know, about the end, the tail end of the war, after the war, as um, a veteran's um, gift. Uh, probably did not see battle, was not found on a janky battlefield somewhere, um, but other ones have been found and they are available online. I will make sure that I post all my description and my research, uh, research below so you guys can check out more of the history on uh, these wonderful vintage buttons. The perfume buttons, the china buttons, and the Connecticut National Guard coat button are uh, some of my absolute favorite in my collection so far. Um, I'm always looking for more. Anyway, I will make sure I post all my research links below so you guys can continue to learn about vintage buttons. Um, until then, until next time, be good humans. Bye!